Oh, hey, what's up? Vlogging is just telling a story with a video, but having the right tools can, can make it a lot more fun. What equipment do you need? Well, obviously you need the GoPro. They just came out with the GoPro Hero 9, which is amazing. Don't have that one yet. I'm vlogging right now on the GoPro Hero 8. You don't need any additional attachments or things to make your video actually work and be good, but some stuff's gonna help. The mics on the GoPro Hero 8 and 9 aren't bad at all, but you're for sure gonna get better audio if you use an external mic. And right now I'm using the Rode VideoMic Pro. I've actually ordered another mic, the first like real mic I've ordered in a long time. I'm super excited to share a video with you on that one. I'll actually link it below it's for, a, for a preview if you wanna check it out. But that new mic I'm getting is actually less than the Rode Video Mic Pro, which is way too big for this rig. And it's got one cool feature that this mic doesn't have, but that's, that's a whole different video. So you probably do wanna get an external mic. The GoPro Hero 9 has a front-facing screen, which is amazing. I actually just got the display mod, which is now pretty much obsolete if you have a GoPro Hero 9 because the Hero 9 has a front-facing screen. Display mod's kind of cool. I can look up and I can see myself and see that, oh, I'm framed pretty well. Woo! The only other equipment you're really gonna want are some mounts. Right now I'm mounted on a Joby Gorilla Pod, which is the big one I use for my bigger camera, my Panasonic GH5 right now. But you can get tripods that are like 15 bucks. It'll hold your GoPro just fine. There's links for a couple options down below. In case you're wondering, this is the exact rig I'm using to record this entire video. Every shot on this video is gonna be shot with this GoPro and this whole setup. I probably would have tried to sneak in some drone shots, but uh, I kind of crashed my zone, but it's on the way back from DJI, I'll, I'll fix it up. Because GoPros are so small, you can put them anywhere, mount them anywhere. So you wanna get a little mounting kit for like 25 bucks. You can get like 20 different mounts. You can mount it, you know, on your car, on your foot, on your head, on your chest. There's a link for one of those down below as well. And I suggest you do that because Dude, you've got a, you got a GoPro, you might as well take advantage of it. As I sometimes talk about toys and cameras and accessories on this channel, I don't want you to lose sight of the fact that story matters most. What's your story? Even if you're doing a tutorial video, it kind of helps if you're telling a story. And in this case, I, I do have a story. I sold my house in Southern California. I've got a whole new channel about that right up, right up there. You can check that out, Life Untethered, where I talk about selling my house in Southern California, buying an RV, this one you're seeing right now. This is more than I've ever shown of this RV. In fact, it's kind of premature on the other channel. Renovating it so I can live in it full time while I'm building a house here in Southern Oregon. That's my general story, but today the story I'm gonna share with you as we talk about vlogging on a GoPro is, where is the nearest river access to my property? Which is near the Rogue River. I just don't know where the nearest river access is. So this adventure is gonna be finding river access from my place. By the way, here's what my place looks like now. It is in the middle of being built. Let's talk about angles. If you're just a talking head sitting at a desk, yammering, people can get bored very quickly. One way to make your vlogs and all your videos more interesting is to use different angles. And because the GoPro is so small and has so many mounts available, it's super easy to do. It's worth taking the time. Let's go find that river. Looks like I found it. It's closer than I thought. I'm at the river. It's about two miles from my house. The question is, should I go in the river? It's pretty warm out, but it's it's getting pretty late. What do you think? Post in the comments below. Should I jump in the river? I'm I'm ready, just just in case. I recently learned something. Sometimes when you smell a skunk and then you drive by that same area over and over again and you still smell skunk, you're like, dude, it's been days and weeks. What's the deal? And you look out your window and you go, oh, wait a second. Hey, and a skunk, that's pot. In Oregon here, apparently they, uh, they grow a lot of that stuff. 
let's talk about stabilization. The GoPro has insane in-body image stabilization. Like right now I'm on the eight, it's like really good. The nine is just ridiculous. You used to need a gimbal if you're gonna do this walkie-talkie kind of thing, but look how smooth this is. I'm just walking and talking and it looks super smooth, even on, on the eight, you know, you need the nine, but the nine's even, even better. Are you a cop, man? You know, we're just here fishing. Do I look like a cop? Kind of, you know, you dress like a cop, kind of, you know, they're all like, uh, tomorrow's the last day to fish up river here, and then we have to go way down river, and we thought maybe you were a cop investigating us um, about fishing. <laughs> I'm gonna go and put my hook in right now and, and hook a salmon. Do it to it, hope you get a big one. That was pretty funny. They legit thought I was a cop. I guess tomorrow's the last day to fish here and then it's take a time. But that's, I'm just, I'm just this. Dude, that's pretty sketchy walking through thorns and stuff. And then, uh, you know, like, didn't want to get shot or anything. How do I get past this? Let's talk about lenses. GoPro's got three lenses, digital lenses. Right now we're on the linear. That's the most zoomy of the lenses. And it's the one that's gonna look most cinematic and most natural. You can also jump into wide, which looks like this, which, you know, might be okay under some circumstances, but notice that you can see my mic in the corner there because it's too wide for this big, obnoxious mic. This is not a great mic for a GoPro. You also have Super View, which is a 16 millimeter lens and it's really, really wide and it gives you that GoPro-y feel. And if you're going for that, that's fine. You know, sometimes you might need it because you're in a tight space. But if you want things to look more cinematic, stick with linear. I just noticed that the river got a little crazy here. So I think I, I, might, I might go back a little bit if I'm gonna, should I, should I jump in? Now is probably a really good time to talk about settings with the light evaporating. The GoPro is an amazing camera, amazing action camera. You do a lot with it. You can't do it with other cameras. But because it has a tiny sensor, it's not gonna be great in low light. To get the best image quality out of your GoPro, you wanna use kinda of settings something like this. You wanna set the ISO to minimum 100 and max 100 if there's bright sunlight everywhere and you have tons of light. And if you really wanna push it, like a little early when I was inside my RV, I had it at max 400, still pretty dark. But if you go any higher than that, you get a lot of grain, it's just not gonna look good. I shoot in 24P, that's 24 frames a second. The reason I do that is because you get the best motion blur and it's the most cinematic looking. If you go to movie theater, everything's shot in 24 frames a second. That is what we have been accustomed to and trained to think is cinematic. So I shoot in 24P for that similar effect. I shoot almost everything in 4K, unless I'm going for some slow motion that doesn't have the ability on my camera to shoot in 4K. I can go up to 60 frames a second in 4K, but if I want to go to 120, or I think I can even go to 240 on this camera in HD, then I'll just drop it down to HD. But then I'll always scale up to 4K when I upload because you'll get the best resolution on YouTube by uploading in 4K. I set the sharpness to medium. If you have it too high, it looks artificial, and I just use GoPro Color. Looks pretty great. By the way, if you'd like to vlog on a GoPro, go ahead and hit that like button right now. It'll really help out my diminished self-esteem. Also, hit subscribe. Oh, yeah, that'd really help. This looks uh, a little safer right here. I think maybe, maybe I'll jump in here. You should know that when somebody's on YouTube watching videos, they have a very, very short attention span. So you wanna change locations a lot. Yes, it takes longer, but it makes your videos much more watchable and it's gonna keep people engaged longer. If you're a business owner or a realtor like I am, if you wanna create videos that people are gonna keep watching, change locations, go places cool, go somewhere like, like, like this. Pretty, pretty cool, right? The goal with every video should be to make your viewer feel something. You should decide in advance what you want your viewer to feel. If it's, you want them to feel a sense of adventure and excitement. <laughs> then have that in mind before you start shooting. If you want them to be sad, melancholic, you're going through a struggle, you want them to feel what you're going through, Think about that before you start shooting, and one way you can make that happen, besides obviously telling story, is to use music. Now I use Epidemic Sound for almost all of my music and all of my videos on all of my channels, and there is a link for it down below. There's a link for a 30-day free trial of Epidemic Sound. I suggest you try it. Yes, there's free music you can get on YouTube. There's free music available at various places on the internet, but Epidemic Sound has an amazing selection of music. So you should, you should check that link out down below. It, it makes a world of difference. 
You ever hear that song from when you were in high school and you're like, oh, the good old days. You know, that music, man. Somebody recently asked me if the GoPro is better than an iPhone for video, and my answer was, it's just different. The GoPro is waterproof, it's an action camera, it's got ridiculous image stabilization, so depending on what you're using it for, it might be the perfect camera for you. For vlogging, it's, it's pretty freaking amazing. If I was looking for a camera to do talking head videos for my office, this would not be the camera I'd choose. I'd choose something like the Canon M50 for an entry-level camera. In fact, the next camera I'm gonna get is the Sony a7S III. Ooh, that, that one's amazing. But for vlogging, this thing is killer. So if you do get a GoPro, I recommend that you play with all of the features, learn how to use the time-lapse and the night-lapse and the hyper-lapse and all the different frame rates for slow motion, and it's gonna make your videos so much more fun and so much more watchable. But only use these features if they advance the story because story, you know. Okay, I'm a little a little sketched out to do this because A, there's some current here. Oh, it's pretty shallow. And B, it's friggin' cold, and C, it's getting kind of late to be jumping in the river, but got to test the water capabilities and show you show you the water thing. Before I get hypothermia, I want to share one more thing with you. One of the best things you can do to make your videos look incredible is shoot at golden hour. That's an hour after sunrise, an hour before sunset. It makes all the difference. I mean, look at this right now at this time of day. It's just, the lighting's just, just beautiful. And because the lighting's coming from over there this time of day, there's no harsh shadow, so maybe I look beautiful too. Do I? <gasps> That's, that's, that's pretty cold. I think that, that's all you get. By the way, you probably can't hear me very well because if you get water in the mic, it sounds awful. So here we go. There's a little dot, you have to blow it off. So just blow off the dot and hopefully it'll sound better. Also, if there's water on the lens, you just lick it. When I scuba dive, you used to just spit in the mask and on the lens, you lick it, something in your saliva helps that out. So hopefully it sounds a little better, but sometimes you just gotta wait for the water to drip out of there. Is the GoPro good enough to use to create vlogs, epic, beautiful, cinematic vlogs? I don't know. What do you think? Post in the comments below. GoPro good enough or do you need to spend a gazillion dollars on a camera? If you learned anything in this video, I've got a free webinar at videosecretswebinar.com where I teach you what you need to do to create better videos to grow a business. So check it out. It's free. Videosecretswebinar.com. The very best thing you can do to get better at making videos and making better vlogs is to start creating. Make videos. Don't put it off. Don't try to be perfect. Don't wait till you have the best camera and best setup. Just start creating now with whatever equipment you have. I show up these stairs the way out because I have to go back the way I came. It's not going to be pretty. No trespassing. I'm just trying to find the road. I hope I don't get shot. This is not the way out. This is somebody's property. I have to go back the way I came. Oh boy. A little more than I had anticipated. Oh nice. How do I get out of here, man? Well now, wasn't that an adventure? To see more videos on creating better videos with your GoPro, check out that link right up there. Remember to subscribe by hitting that button right there. I cannot wait to see your incredible and creative GoPro Vlogs.